hello everybody in today's video i'm going to describe about a magnetic contactor its working principle and the industrial wiring diagram for it so before we go into the wiring diagram let's have a look on our contactor first and i, I will briefly describe the main component of it so contactor coil is the most important part of the contactor where you supply the control voltage the control voltage could be a 110 volt or a 24 volt and it all depends on the circuit requirement how your circuit is designed and when the control voltage is supplied on the contactor coil so the magnet inside the contactor will pull the main contacts in so which will allow to transfer the power from the main terminals onto the overload and we have auxiliary contact on the contactor this auxiliary contact will help us to latch the circuit latching means it will keep on holding the contactor even if the momentary push button is released now let's describe uh, briefly overload of the contactor now overload is the main component in an a motor wiring with a contactor because this overload will save our motor just in case of any jam on the line or if you're there is a short circuit or motor is defective so in overload in overload the current limit limit setting is important part so it's a small dial rotatory dial so let's say if your application is let's say your application the motor is consuming at 2 amps and you need to set it slightly higher at 2.5 amps and just in case if there is a line jam or something happens this overload will trip so when the overload will trip then we have to press the reset button in order to go back to it and go back to its initial state so when the overload will trip we have a trip control which is a normally close contact so this normally close contact will break the power going to our contactor coil and this in, in case of our overload our control voltage will be de-energized and there is a trip indicator if this overload trip so this is a normally open contact so this trip indicator might be wired to a let's say light on the panel which will let the operator or a technician to know that the motor overload has tripped so let's describe the so let's have a look on our wiring diagram let's say we have a three phases l1 l2 l3 this is a 600 volt three phase that comes to the plant so from all the all these three phases l1 l2 l3 the power will be going on top of the fuse holder here and we're using a fuses to protect our circuit and the fuse rating could be it depends on the load that is being consumed by your application and these three lines l1 l2 l3 they will pass through the contact through the main contacts of the contactor when the coil is energized so uh, after passing through the main contact of the uh, of the contactor they will go on top of the overload so overload from the bottom terminals of the overload is gonna go straight to the motor so this is uh, this is a uh, basically a uh, three phase wiring for uh, electrical motor using a contactor fuse holder and a overload now let's have a look on a control voltage side for this contactor so our coil as i mentioned earlier this contactor coil is rated for a 110 volt so we need to convert this 600 volt to a 110 volt so the transformer help to do this job so we will use a transformer where the input for the transformer is 600 volt ac and it will convert our it will take the 600 volt and it will convert to the output of a 110 volt ac so this leg of the transformer will give us a 110 volt and the other leg of the transformer will give us a neutral and neutral is always grounded as shown over here so let's describe about the control voltage so this leg of the transformer will give a 110 volt ac it will pass through a fuse and we're using a fuse here just to save our 
control circuit if there is a short or something wrong with the wiring of our control circuit now this 110 after passing through the fuse will come pass through the normally close contact or a normally close switch and it the power will go to this point when the operator will come he will press this normally open switch and this is a momentary switch so he will he have to just press it once it will energize our coil of the contactor so the coil contactor coil over here a1 and a2 are the terminals for our contactor oil so when the contactor coil is energized the main contacts they will be pulled in so when the main contacts will pull, will be pulled in the power will pass through the auxiliary contact 13 and 14 so this one over here is our auxiliary contact the power will pass through this two points 13 and 14 and keep our contactor energizing all the time even if the operator release this normally open switch so if we want to de-energize our coil the operator has to come and press this normally close switch that will de-energize our whole circuit so this is how exactly how the circuit is wired for controlling the coil of a contactor but there is a one mistake our safety is not included in it in it now for example if there is something wrong on the line let's say motor is being overloaded then this overload relay over here it will trip so what will happen when this overload relay will trip this normally close contact of a uh, overload it will become a normally open when this contact over here will become a normally open it will break the 110 line going to the contactor coil so when the 110 line will be broken the coil will be de-energized and hence our motor will be saved so so that's all for wiring a three-phase contactor so i hope this video will be helpful especially for the beginners and uh, that's all thanks for watching